I'm humble, man. I'm ready. I'm good. It's been a long time. I spoke to another human. <laughs> so I really appreciate it, bro. I, re I respect your energy, man. Bring it to me, bro. Whatever you got, I'm going to try my best to give you the best interview I can. Well, I grew up at, I'm originally from uh, Norfolk, Virginia. Uh, 35th Street Park Place. Those that are from, if you know, you know, you know, Park Place wasn't the greatest, you know what I mean? But I floated around Virginia for 13 years and ended up in DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia. People don't know the acronyms. In Virginia, growing up in Virginia, we were going to talk musically. It was, uh, oh no, it's night and day, definitely. DC, Maryland, and Virginia are night and day. Uh, growing up in New uh, Norfolk, basically it was a bunch of Wu Tang fans. It's Wu Tanged out, uh, real hip hop. You know what I mean? Like Wu Tang was really dominant. Nas, uh, Mob Deep. As far as when I was growing up, that's what I was hearing a lot of, a lot of Wu Tang. You know what I mean? When I got to uh, Maryland, this whole thing they got go go music. They do their own thing. Got their own style of dress. They hip hop fans too as well, but predominantly they had their, they were in their own pocket. A little tougher than where I came from. You no, know, where I came from was tough, but I really had to get it how I live in Maryland. You know, really, you know, dog eat dog, man. It couldn't be so right. But it was a melting pot. You got a lot of New Yorkers, people from everywhere coming down. You know, living. So I learned how to actually. Uh, I started writing in Virginia at nine years old, but I started putting it together when I moved to like uh, Capitol Heights, Maryland. And uh, I learned this guy named Don Juan, who's, uh, he lives here in Atlanta now, ironically. And uh, he taught me how to put my bars together and write songs and just be more than a rapper. You know what I mean? He started teaching me how to format my stuff. So Capitol Heights really, VA made me, uh, but DMV made me better. If you want to add, All right? Uh, I got you. I see where you're going with it. You know, it started out. It ain't started out of rap. It started out of poetry. Actually, I'm a church. I'm a church boy. So now I was raised in the church. You know what I mean? <laughs> Seven days a week for 365. <laughs> so, but I, it was stuff that I didn't agree with, and I wanted to be heard. Then I heard this thing called, it was all a dream when you used to read Word Up magazine. <laughs> that wasn't the first record, but that was the record that said, all right, I can do this. You know what I mean? Let me try this. But my first record was a public enemy record. I think um, Fight the Power. It was a record. My mother actually had it. I don't know what it was, a 40. I don't know what size of the record it is. I don't know all the semantics. But I remember this one public enemy record, then KRS one but when I heard Tupac and Biggie it was over, uh, really what put me over the top was if I ruled the world, Nas, right? That really, uh, just not being able to see videos or whatever when I heard these songs or put that paper in the tape, the cassette tape, you know what I mean? Recording over my mother's gospel tapes, you know what I mean? Those songs, like I closed my eyes and I lived in the projects at the time. Those are songs that like took me out of the projects and say, yo, they could do it. I'm gonna do it. So I just miss Pop. I miss Big, man. Like for real. Man. Oh, I don't want to do a bunch of horrible names, you know what I mean? Um King B the God is a derivative of, you know, like B is my name. Brody is my last name, so I just shorten it. And I always had a king mentality, regardless of what stage I'm in life, you know what I mean? I feel like I could be king at anything, you know what I mean? The best at anything. So it's no one king ain't no best, but you know what I mean? In hip hop, you got to be confident <laughs> in what you do or you're going to get fed to the wall. So king be the God. No relation to Charlemagne the God. <laughs> no, no pun intended, no hate, no hate. Rap guys, as you can tell, my influences, I, I had to think different. I said, man, I'm not motivated at what I'm hearing. Like, 
I need to pay homage and take in what made me who I am. Because I remember the DMXs, the slippings, and when I was on popping pills, trying to survive because I was miserable. Had uh, stepfather was on drugs and bad dynamics in my household. Slipping got me through these songs. Like, how can I pay reverence and homage to those who like paved the way for me? And that was really being like authentic in the delivery with the, what they were saying. It was really for the people but had their issues. So I took the, all those greats, as you can hear in that rap, guys, you heard them in the ad-libs, just trying to bring them back alive with uh, references on top of that throughout the verses. You know what I mean? But Rap Gods is like one of my favorite records. You know what I mean? It just I just took on the spirits of the best. You hear 50 in me. Everybody says they hear a little J in me. You know what I mean? But for real, I got Pac in me. I got Revolutionary. I got... I got... You know, I, I'm braggadocious, I'm um, spiritual, I got every, I'm a melting pot, assimilation of the greatest MC. I mean, it, it touched me, bro, because, you know, life is bumpy, you know what I mean? But these little things like this, they mean a lot. It lets me know that somebody's still listening and all is not lost, you know? So that's the little thing that I take. You know, I got, if you're at the Michael Jordan complex, you need that one little thing. To get you going. And what you did got me going. I'm like, all right. You asked about the clothes. You asked about this. All the things that kind of like dead right now because of focus. You know what I mean? All right, I need to step it up. Somebody is paying attention. I don't need to look up. I need to reach down and help other people as well. And stop focusing on networking with those people that's already up. <laughs> you know what I mean? That don't really rock with you or not organic and really trying to help you, you know what I mean? So I respect that for you speaking life and uh your energy, you know. Just make just anything you wanted me to do, man, I probably would do, bro. Just off the strength of me not knowing you from a can of paint, you know. So respect. Bro, anything you say to me, I'm gonna say I'm likewise, bro. Everything the same on your end, bro. Keep that same energy. Um, I don't like using the word humble, you know what I mean? Because people use that word for you to stay in your place, you know what I mean? No, you talk your shit <laughs> and be who you are, man. <laughs> for real. Yeah, man. I'm repping it. You made me pull it out the closet, bro. <laughs> Ghost Gods of Pharaoh, everybody's a god, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Got it. No, I got you. the package coming soon. Shout out to a Kofi, my boy in Nigeria, for having me bring this to life. Um, I'll pull out some. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, here goes samples. Here's like some samples of what's to come. Different clothes you got. He's gonna. This, this print's gonna be on jean jackets. It's gonna be on jean jackets. You know what I mean? This is part of the luxury brand. But I'm gonna train. All of this, these are just ideas, you know what I mean? My, shout out to my guy, Kofi. Please go run his page up and look at what he's got. He got a lot of good stuff on there, but it's, it's top of the line stuff, man. It's not going to be cheap. Right. See, so ideas. So now forget all the corporate websites and all of that. You guys are interested. Tell me what you're interested in. We're going to get it going like that. Run my regular IG page. After that, I'll build everything up after that. Like, I'm not trying to go think extra no more because that's what's keeping me stagnant. I've done this before, but I'm going to be very consistent. Let me know what you guys like. But he's like, hey, sure. This is a puff vinyl. This is not, this vinyl right here is not what I really want to promote. This puff vinyl is just better and when you wash it. I don't want to give you guys nothing cheap if I'm calling myself royalty. You know I mean? But this is my custom. This is where it started at. My custom be the God piece, you know. But that's my man, my guy Kofi, you know, Ghost Guys and Pharaoh. Green Jacket as well. So that's what I got going on, reference to clothes. But thank you uh, to Doug, man, for like putting up. 
putting that fire back out. You know I mean, not putting it out, but igniting that fire again. So we work on it and we'll get with the wifey and uh, uh, the t-shirts rolling out here soon based on request. I got you. Like Oprah say, writing is cathartic, you know what I mean? But I feel like music is cathartic, period, you know what I mean? Reference to like things that uh, I don't need like fluff music or I, I'm not knocking any new artists or whatever. Just when I was younger, it was Curtis Blow was kind of corny to me, but he was the best rapper. He was Jay-Z to my daddy, you know? So I'm not going to play that game, those semantics, with the younger artists. But it's like uh, Nicki Minaj says, more popular artists that they're worried about than talented, you know what I mean? So I try to stay what I stick to that get through music. Like when I'm going through stuff with my children, I have a total of nine children, you know, so I can't listen to no fluff trying to get through these days and times I have to deal with them or or situations in, in my marriage or whatever. I can't listen to fluff. I need something to get me through. So my motivation is to always keep it organic and true to myself and not try to be nobody else. I really don't listen to the radio. I just try to go from the heart. Sometimes I beat myself up because I feel too preachy. I feel like I'm just being too political or whatever, but there's no, uh, it's all heart, you know, and my desire to like get people through. Some of the times I feel like, dang, I can tell people how to feel better and get better and do better, but I, it's not applied to my own life. <laughs> it's just like we're vessels, but we be, we, a lot of us are in pain and hurting too, trying to figure it out. And it sounds so simple. It seems like it should be so easy because we're spitting these words that we're spitting to help you guys, but we still be lost too. Musicians are the most raggedy people far as, you know what I mean, like emotionally, <laughs> you know, through so many emotions or, or whatever. We don't feel confident enough because we're not the status quo this and status quo that. So a lot of this uh, this writing I do is just is straight uh, from the heart, you know, and to just be a better asset to the world and hope for myself in the process, but it's a journey. I don't know if you heard the song Gifted. That Gifted song embodies like everything that we're talking about. Like that song was from the gut, man. Like it was, but it was really for my um, one of my my wife's cousins. It's my cousin too through marriage, but uh, he was going to do some domestic stuff. You know what I mean? And those words just came. But when she hears it, she breaks down crying. We all both cry like babies listening to that because it hit home. But I'm crying for a different reason. I'm crying like, dang, I said these words for you to help heal, but I'm still broken. Like, what words I'm gonna find for myself <laughs> to actually like help me get on that road of recovery, you know what I mean? So I don't know. It's still a work in the process, but that's what motivates me. Um, just being organic as possible. Uh, to start with the people first is about the people, you know what I mean? And um, everything's full circle after that. Right. It ain't, it's not always been like that, though. I had a personality complex. Think you're a good interviewer, bro. You, you know how to get things out of people. Um, that's a good quality, um, positively. Um, yes, I was not always like that. First of all, I was from VA. And um, at that time, New York dominated hip hop. So you didn't sound like a New Yorker or anything. Nobody really paid attention. And then going to DC or Maryland, trying to act like I was from New York, for like I kept this going for whew, a good six, seven years. I'm from New York when everybody knew it was. <laughs> In my head, I was from New York because it was cool. I was chilling with my boy Don Juan, who's from the Bronx, 241st. Um, you know, and I was just like his little, uh, little puppy, man, chasing behind him, you know what I mean? Trying to learn the lingo, what's cool, what's not cool. He was just the, the it guy, you know what I mean? You know, just learned a lot. Then one day I just start crying, man, out of the blue. It's like, man, I just feel fake. 
I'm gonna be who I am. And I just started being myself from that day on. I mean, we kept this lot going for so long. It was just like, but everybody would laugh at me while I was crying because they were like, before we knew your 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 report card said Norfolk, Virginia on them. We're like, when we you from New York, we knew you weren't from New York. But um, that's how the impact of New York hip hop had on me. I mean, I wanted to be there. I felt like I was there, even though I was in the projects. I would act like I was in New York in the projects. You know what I mean? Reference taking, embodying the whole essence of what hip hop is. You know what I mean? Based on the greats I was listening to, your Chaos Ones, oh, uh, your Biggies, your Nas, your Cool G Raps. You know what I mean? Like all the greats, bro. The, the Assassins, Cool G Rap, they just should be on Mount Rushmore, bro. like. These people, big the kings with the dancing and the lyrics and the consciousness, you know what I mean? It's like the list goes on. It ain't no best or no favorite. Everybody is like it's like high school. Everybody start up a freshman and they graduate to seniors. Everybody had a chance in the nineties and the golden eras, the ninety six and ninety seven years, up until the two thousands. But ninety five, ninety six, whoo. It was just a melting pot of creative, talented People weren't as popular as the other, but far as skill level, you had to better. You're in a room with a Busta Rhyme and a DMX. You got to, you got to bring it. Uh, you're in a room with Pop, Jay Z, and any of these big names that we know. You know, what I mean, you had to bring it, and you had to be different. Like mimicking them was like, like a sin. I remember my first time. I used to bite a lot of the. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna say it. I'm older now. I don't care. I was a kid. I didn't know. I used to bite uh, anything that came out of the Wu-Tang camp, whether it was uh, Grave Diggers, uh, all their groups. You know what I mean? I never thought people paid attention to them like that because their slang was different. I'm like, ain't nobody repeating that. That's a freestyle. I heard it on the radio, on my tape, on that tape, or whatever you want to call it. I said, ain't nobody listening to this, man. So I'll take some of them lyrics because I was so, like, hypnotized by the creativity of these people that I mentioned. You know what I mean? But it all worked in my favor and helped develop who I am. You know what I mean? As far as I take a piece from here, take a piece from there, but overall, I'm really me. I'm assimilation of these people, but I'm King B the God. I'm A Brody with the government. But, um, sorry if I ran around the corner with that. Most, most definitely. I mean, those were the days where you look at the credits on cds and whatever and just amazed man like the bomb squad all those people that produced the uh tracks for uh uh, uh, uh public enemy i looked at all these like i love the boom bap so anybody that had the boom bap and uh chucky thompson was one of my mentors from the um, the hit from diddy's daddy's house you know what i mean like he was one of my made rest in peace he, he uh Wale, everybody, anybody you can think of, he had in DC, he had influence on. Like Chucky Thompson did a lot of the Mary J and a lot of these hits that we hear, the one mics with Nas and all of that. Just him feeding into me. Like I come from royalty, literally. Like I was not knowing what I was around when I was around it. You know what I'm saying? Like, all right, King, you got, I, I see your structure, you're growing in your talent, but you need to. Play around with sounds. You need to make your own sounds. You need to do this. You know, my young years, I got mad. I'm like, man, there's always something with this, with the hip hop. We always got to be this and got to be that. But now that I know, it's like, you can't be in there here playing. Like, you got to be for real about your craft and, and serious and put those hours in. And I've put millions of hours in for real, like sleepless nights. I've been doing this for 30 something years. Man. Like, I tried to quit, couldn't stop, you know what I mean? Went on a five year, six year hiatus because of, you know, industry hurt. <laughs> We're not feeling like good enough and just exhausted at when I'm gonna make it mentality, you know what I mean? Instead of you made it because you like put one foot forward and that thing that's in your head, everybody can't take this out here and, and like bring it to light and put it in like a solid form and like really create. They could think it and they'll ponder on it, but that bringing it to light and putting it together is a whole different level of energy that you have to have. So doing all of that and, and like this day of time and getting the respect like from even one person like yourself, 
it it really revitalizes a person like me. You know what I mean? To all right, somebody's paying attention. That's all that matters is that one, basically super fan. So yeah, like I hope I answer your question, but I, I'll ramble. And I know my manager's looking. She's gonna get on me. Shout out the rocks. Every Tupac album. Which one is? Every Tupac album. Um, my favorite album, to be for real, that I can listen to religiously, will have to be a matter. That's the hot one. But um, I don't have a favorite overall, bro. It's like every period of time, like in any period we talk about from. 93 when i actually started paying attention to the words you know what i mean of hip-hop because i really started out as trying to be r&b singer but i have no anybody knows me but i can't keep a note but i can write the mess out of song any song you hear in my albums i write them predominantly 98 percent of them i write the songs that you're hearing the r&b i cannot hold a note so i try to write, write. Right, I call myself the melody god. I know how to come up with melodies, and especially on the keys. Might not know how to put all the progressions together, but a melody, I can get it like that to drop on my head. But um, I don't really have a particular, like, one album that stands out from the other. It's just like the periods, the time, the errors. You know what I mean? I pull from everything, but Tupac was the heaviest influence on me. Like, undeniable. But I got that voice, like Tupac, that demands and commands you know, like, like, shut the whole room down. Like, hey, who is this? You know what I mean? So, if he would have never passed away, I would never be a Jay. I would have probably never listened to Jay Z at all. You know, I mean? no disrespect to Jay Z, but Jay Z motivates you. He's a different thing. They're not in the same scope. You know, Jay Z's motivating because he was witty, savvy businessman. You know what I mean? Tupac more revolutionary. I can't say businessman. Say more revolutionary, uh, we are the people type person, you know what I mean? Like, he, he kind of represent what I represent. Jay Z is like gritty commercialism to me. <laughs> no, anything's possible, you know? So, all respect to, to the God Jay Z. The favorite entertainer, my favorite entertainer is Buster Rhymes, clearly. Shut hands down. Nobody can kill. Like, who would try to go after that? That act right there, bro. Like, it's not. It's not in your best interest to go after him. Like, he captivates. As far as entertainment, period, he's the best. He's Michael Jackson of hip hop. Bro. Like, period. His voice delivery. Oh man, yeah, man. Part for me, bro. I got one of my brothers from Racine, um, my brother Duke, he from Racine. So I got a lot of people, my mate on um, that So Simple song, May Rest in Peace, Tim Doss, he was from Racine as well. So, um, yeah, man, I got some, I got a lot of love in uh, the, the, the Midwest, bro. Black Hot, I just wanted a, uh, that's a 50 influence. You know what I mean? Basically, you know, I just wanted to show my lyrical prowess as far as cadence. You know what I mean? You, you heard a little 50 rappers in there. You know, I just wanted to show uh, when I pull up on a block, basically the song is about me making the uh, people going to listen when I pull up. You know what I mean? I just wanted to, I didn't want to be extra hip. Hip hop is about being hip. I don't want to really want to be corny. But I was like, man, like, I got something to say as well. So I want to be catchy with the hook. But as you see, by the second verse, I get super lyrical in there. And I start playing around with all the things that's in my head, that crazy thing that's in my head that makes me want to do, like, cadences or whatever. Like, I my influence is basically 50 Cent on this record. No way around it. Because he can switch up a hook two or three times in one song. And you don't even un recognize that that's not easy, bro, like, to keep people's attention like that. So I just floating around with, like, playing around with melodies. I always wanted to not just be spitting bars because some of that stuff in this new age, they don't want to hear that, bro. Like, 
they don't want to hear that. They need something catchy. Then you can, when you catch the ear, you can be who you truly are <laughs> to, and captivate them. You know what I mean? Later, they might rewind it and say, all right, yeah, I got it. You know what I mean? Instead of being super lyrical, physical, individual, spiritual, you know what I mean? Like that. People don't really want to hear that. Now we're getting down to like one minute for TikTok music. People selling like, doing like one verse and a hook and calling that a song. So the tension is bad. I don't want to do that. So the block hot was basically just to show people that, you know what I mean? Like, I got something to say. I can be, uh, I can keep up with anybody in the game in re reference to that song. When I pull up, man, I make everybody go crazy. Basically, I was trying to see in that record, you know what I mean? But hopefully it catch on. Been out for a minute. But I haven't put any. Right, not mimicking everybody. I didn't mimic anybody. I just did what I actually felt, and it still was in my lane. It wasn't too far off, like trying to be like someone. If you don't implement something like that, you're going to get left behind right now. Like, all that promoting, I'm going to keep it real like it's 82, okay. All right, maybe uh, you still got fans from 82, but you're not going to go far if you don't, like, now, I don't want to use the word conform because that's a sin in our community. So I would say if you don't kind of adapt a little bit and take pieces like you did when you were younger, you know what I mean? You took, oh, Curtis Rattway ain't all that. Uh, huh, 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 huh. It's like a joke. You don't want to rap in that cadence, you know what I mean? But you take some of the style and make it your own or whatever. We got to do the same thing with the people. We can't just throw them in the trash, you know what I mean? We got to teach them, like, teach them do it without like pointing fingers i'm not like that anymore i used to be like oh they that this this because i was kind of mad because i ain't getting no shine you know <laughs> i felt like people wasn't hearing me but it's like all right you gotta like do the work and figure it out you know what i mean it's a lifelong thing with creativity you know? so i try to trust myself as best as i can when it comes to being creative and not second guess it and just do it and be happy with the results, regardless. Mm. Okay, like I was telling you on the phone, behind the scenes, I had this Kingdom Restoration album. I got two albums behind the scenes. Uh, one is unreleased, but the other one I'm talking about, it won all types of awards in the Christian hip hop um, arena. It's called uh, Kingdom Restoration. If you guys wanna go on Spotify, check that out. I don't know why, I don't know why uh, I put it out to Disho Kid uh, while I was publishing. But I don't understand why iTunes banned it. I don't understand. I don't have any samples in it, but they, they removed it from there. I don't know why. But um, I feel like it's a classic, but I'll let the people tell me. It's still hard. It wasn't really preachy. I was rapping and spitting like I normally spit. We're just talking about God, spirituality on it. And uh, I think it's one of the hardest albums well put together instrumental wise, you know what I mean? Musically, sonically, I had orchestras, real strings, horns, and all types of stuff in my music. It's who I am, that album, like who I really am. And um, I'm mad that I ever took it off social media platforms because I was, I really took it off because I was tired of getting pimped like streaming pimpses, you know what I mean? Who t Who is the idiot or the evil genius that said my music is worth, that I spent hours on and years on is worth pennies on a dollar, you know what I mean? Don't make sense to me. So I couldn't, to this day, I'm still trying to figure out how to monetize that in the way they can help not just me, but the person that really loves it. Sort of what, sort of what Lil Russell was doing. If you follow him, like he is like taking Nipsey's hustle and model and uh, Ryan Leslie and all those guys that set this before came before us that know how to actually monetize and play the data game and uh, and giving the people what they actually want. You know what I mean? Skipping middlemen. It's just like that's my next move is to figure this thing out and hopefully I get. Just like meet with like minds like yourselves and other people to actually figure this thing out so I can get this stuff to the people and not like bogart it. You know what I mean? Because I feel like I'm getting ripped off by 
the powers that be. Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, y'all heard him, man. Y'all heard what he said, right? Okay. Let's, let's, let's run it up. Kingdom Restoration is out. And the next one that I'm about to release in the next month or two is Birth of a Legend. It never was released digitally. It was physically being hustled with in the 07, 08, but it sounds timeless. Some of the records, some of the records, you know, need upgrades here and there, but I don't have the masters to those due to some, some issues with the hard drives or whatever. Over time, you know, they break down or whatever. And some, some, some things are hard to recover. Just like the Kingdom Restoration Masters, it's hard to recover them because that disc is um, damaged. But, um, the music is timeless, man. Like, go check that Kingdom Restoration out, but Birth of a Legend will be. But even my man can leak a couple records. I don't even care. Two or three records out. I'm sending, I already sent them a lot of songs, but I got over 100 plus songs on release. But I got you, bro. <laughs> oh, so Bizzle, Bizzle. You like Bizzle, Kingdom Restoration. Like, if you like Game Changers, Bizzle was a Game Changer. Nobody ever heard nothing like that before. Christian hip-hop was considered corny at the time. So we came around at almost the end of that, and nobody ever heard what they heard from that album. And I, I'm i not saying it. You can say it for yourself when you listen to it. It'll definitely, songs like I Need You will get you by. The whole album, bro. The whole album just was, it was the right place, the right time. You know, the people really made that album happen. I didn't have any money. It was all ideas. It started with a song called Wretch Like Me. There's a video on YouTube as well. It's probably on the A Brody called Wretch Like Me. And um, that song is what started the wildfire. Um, shout out to Mike Bell out of Jacksonville, who um, was on a lot of those records and helped me uh, make it musically sound, make sense on that album far as instrumentation was and uh met a lot of people man a lot of testimonies which they'll come out the world works when you if you start bringing up that album you'll see the the fans that are remaining and hanging with me to this day which is a handful of them but they'll let you know that the album did a lot of things for them and me so shout out to um, bishop stanley williams and all those people in jacksonville florida that gave me a shot and believe uh, in my vision and let me uh, prosper, man. So, I mean, God did it, but the vessels that he helped use, man, respect to y'all. I understand, I understand, but whatever mission that you see that you know, and you clearly know, you don't need any more signs or confirmation about that he told you to do, you just gotta do it, do the mission. And that's what it takes, that's what it takes, you know what I mean? If it's not about this, this sect, it's not about them, it's about it could be just me. It could be just one person that's in Minnesota. I don't know, but it's a trickle effect. You know what I mean, a trickle effect. When we out of place, man, we can just mess up a lot of stuff. So, less obedience is better than sacrifice for real. All right, All right. It's sort of like a Michael Jackson essence. It's like you see what Michael did to the world. He gone. But a two-year-old right now in 2023 knows a Michael Jackson song. Might not know his face, but they know a Michael Jackson song right now. You know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, that's the effect that I want. You know, they say positive music doesn't sell, but all the big artists that we can think of are actually positive. So it's like, uh, it's trying to reprogram the minds of the people, you know what I mean, to, to actually believe in what they see. I believe some of these things that we see could have been from another life we lived. And the reason why we hurt and go through so much pain is because we're trying to get back to that life that we lived in that life, that last life. But it's something that we didn't get that put us where we are, you know what I mean? But we got to stay on assignment, stick to it regardless of how much it hurt. And that's easier said than done. So my music is basically I'm trying to just unify people and basically show them that the underdog is always the overdog, bro. Like the people that go through the most pain, um, they yield the best results. They're the best motivation for the people. You know, 
when you counting me out, that's the wrong thing to do. You know what I mean? I'm a dog. <laughs> I'm coming, baby. I'm coming. You know what I mean? So, like I said in the beginning, I always need that thing. Michael Jordan always needed that thing. That, oh, you're not acknowledging me? That I'm the greatest? All right, I'll show you. <laughs> that mambo mentality, you know what I mean? Like, I'm in a gym when you're in the club. I mean, I was like that with the music. Oh, you're going to smoke weed? You're going to do that? I was like, a, I was horrible with my mouth when I didn't believe that you was, like, trying to lock in like me. I was Kobe of this music, bro. Like, any, anybody that knows me on any picture you're going to see, you're going to see me on a keyboard. You're going to see me, like, it's either basketball court or I'm, on a, I'm somewhere rocking or making a song about everything. I could be in love. I'm making a song about my girlfriend. I'm, I'm rapping about my friends, trying to get them to rap, stay out of trouble. I'm always doing music. It's been my whole life. I've been hard to balance forever. So, yeah, man, my music is uh, I'm just... I think I've been here to, I know, I don't think, I know I've been here to, sent here to do this solely. I just got to focus on, focus and believe, you know, so thank you for, think just thank you for the platform, bro. I don't, it don't matter what level it's on, bro. That doesn't matter to me at all. It's just clarity in it. And, uh, you asking me, is this resurfacing, is this reigniting? You know what I mean? That good energy to like proceed and take it to the next level. I know you. So that means you're gonna have fun with free your mind. I know you listen to free your mind. That record right there is crazy. That's the most hip hop it gets on that record. Just talk. Oh yeah. Um. Have you seen that video? Oh, that's my guy. That's my brother. That's my best friend. That's my confidant. That's my ace. My boom. That's my that's my ace right there. Um, Andrew McLean, out of Carolina, uh, GMA, GHME Films, but he's more than just a film guy. He's a singer songwriter as well as a producer. You know what I mean? But um, we were just sitting around chilling, smoking. <laughs> we weren't even thinking about that thing. We just put it together like we just basically was doing a, like a parody of these rappers. Um, showing money and all this stuff, you know what I mean? He just thought it was funny. Make, make him rest in peace. We just did it off the fly. wasn't no thinking about it, you know what I mean? It was just like, shout out to Goody Mob. They had a song, People Don't Dance No More. All they do is this. All I did is spun that song and say, Rappers Don't Rap No More. All they do is this gang. All they do is this. <laughs> What's that song rap, you know what I mean? I just switched it up. But I, I still pay homage to them. But talked about, you know, the thing that I didn't like in the music without sounding like a hater, you know what I mean? But Mama Rap was like, that song was actually done in like 2016, bro. I just stayed on it because I, I feel like it's catching. I believe, like, I believe not to be sound conceited or vain, but I feel like that's the type of record that was ahead of its time at the time. If I would have put it out at the time that I did it, it would have sounded like I was hating because everybody was sounding the same, like the Migos and rapping like Migos at the time in 2016, 2015. So it's time, you know, I believe all these albums will be caught up to. It's just all I need is one. And I don't know what it is. Every record we say is a hit. I don't know what a hit is until it is a hit. You know what I mean? And I don't really concern myself with that no more. I just want to stop bogarting the music and hoarding it and just letting it go. So, um, so people can vibe with. But Mumble Rap, man, came out of uh, everybody sounding the same. But I said, I don't want to sound like I'm hating. I use Pimp C on the verse. That Atlanta interview where he died, chopped that up um, to make it to engage, to catch your ear, to listen to it in the first place. And I, I think I put it together pretty well. Shout out to Rob um, Young, my engineer as well, for helping me with the idea. Right, right. And that was Tim's idea. It was all off freestyle, bro. We didn't think none of that, bro. You know. Come on, get you some money, man. Get you some money. The J. Cole, the Charlotte Hunt, J. Cole special. <laughs> yeah, man, they got guns in the videos, bro. They, they ain't really 
Like it's Cap University, man. It's Cap culture, man. So like you know what I mean? But people catch up to it. Ain't nobody caught up to it for real like that because it ain't been mass promoted. It just it was just fun. That was just fun. Because I haven't did I never did anything like that out loud. I'm house funny, but just to get captured and my, my main man died like two weeks later after that, it's like well, at least he got to do that and have fun. He's from, like I said, from the Midwest. Uh, He's from Wisconsin, uh, Tim Doss. It put a, like, a little dent in the whole thing. I was revitalized. We in the studio. When we go, we go 10 hours plus. We don't want to do nothing over. We want to bolt record, and that's it. You know what I'm saying? I miss that guy. That slowed me down. That's what got me in the stuck mode. Was like, he was in motivation. But the whole time he was sick and not saying nothing about it for real. Like, oh, trying to have you concerned. But I see the signs now. And it's like, man, at least I delivered what I said I was going to do. Because he, he was just getting out of prison. He's in prison for, what, eight, nine years? And uh, that year and a half felt like 10 years, man, meeting this guy. Felt like a real brother, man. So, shout out to Duke for introducing me to Tim Doss, man. We got classic records on him that's not when we really got to do an album like R. Kelly did with Jay back in the day. That records that we put out to this day. But, um, yeah, man, he don't think, man, for real. I just haven't released half of it. But like I said, I got all this school. Wait, wait, wait. I understand. I understand where your heart is. Appreciate that. Right. You don't know how, you don't know how people hurt man. What's going on in people like so that's some of that stuff is meant for meant to happen to humble us and let us know man how we need to treat each other. Living people. Treat the living like it definitely hit home with me. I have to turn this ship around like fast. Because you know, a lot of stuff is going on. It's bumpy over here. It ain't it ain't pleasant, but you know. It's hopefully um in the expeditions fashion I can get this shit back um, the right way, man. It start with myself love. And I I can't love nobody if I don't love myself. So I'm growing. I'm not a perfect, I'm not an angel, but, Music saves my life, man. That's all I can say. We talking about music, that's the only thing that's keeping me here, boy. <laughs> hip hop is kept out of prison. Hip hop has uh at times felt fed my family. Uh hip hop is uh my first love. <laughs> hip hop is uh almost every memory I had in these forty one years, young years. Um hip hop is everything, man. Without hip hop, I don't know. I will be in a mental asylum. I would be crazy, bro. Hip hop helped me escape a lot of atrocities, uh, a lot of things in the past and current. <laughs> and I know that's gonna help me in the future. So, only thing I can focus on right now, you know, right now, um, I just want to get back to my first love and make sure that uh, I get everything I can possibly get out of me to help somebody else. You know get to whatever they're going through or get their mind up, whether it be a political song, a spiritual song, or basically commercial entertainment, whatever it is, you know, I just want people to take their mind off, like, the weight of life, you know what I mean? Right, songs like Die Today, so songs like Die Today, I don't know if you heard that yet. That song right now, it's, it's basically a slipping like a DMX slipping type song. I just talk about how I was molested in that record, uh, abandonment issues with the parents, you know what I mean? Suicide type stuff in, in the second verse. You know? It's like people gonna catch up to it. It's not, when you hear the auto tune, the, which is not bad, but it's more like slipping meets Phil Collins. Uh, uh, I can feel it in the air. I mean, not feel it in the air. Um, What's his song? Phil's calling number one song that everybody plays. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
has that feeling for us hook wise, you know, like I went into that mindset of what would Phil Collins kind of do in this in this moment, you know what I mean? Because that's I like his texture, his voice, he got the sting. He got his own voice, but you know, I like their their voices and their texture mixed with my my upbringing, you know, I just try to flip everything, you know, make it current. But that record right there is like one of my favorite records on it because it's a sleeper. It's like everybody says, man, I don't know about this because they think I'm trying to be like what's current. And it was just how I feel, how I would sing it, how how my heart is singing it, you know what I mean? So I can't interpret it how my heart is feeling with that record. You know what I mean? It's one of them things. It's, it's, it's kind of give you chills because I'm saying if I die today to my kids, you know what I mean? So that's what everybody's weird about. It. It's like, are you saying you're about to die? Like you're trying to speak that? I'm not, no, I'm not saying that's always, that was definitely going to come. You know what I mean? If I die, I try to do this. I try to do that. I try to make sure that y'all guys are straight and and y'all just equipped for life. That's, that's what the song's about. It's not about I want to die. I want to live. I'm ready to live. I ain't ready to die. I know it's coming, but, you know, I'm ready to live, man. I'm ready to stride and not survive all the time. Look back, you know. So that song just, like, gets into how the bundle of feelings of being overwhelmed with life, being a dad, trying to dream, and financial issues and abandonment issues. Like, basically, it just a therapeutic song for me to release those feelings. So I ain't mean to get go that far with it, but yeah, check it out, bro. Right, because and at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, these songs that I you hear is cool, but I still don't know who I am. You know what I mean? And people are like, how could you say that? I really don't. I still ain't getting into like who I am on these songs because I'm trying to make it or whatever the mentality is. So they are authentic, but it's still something missing. It's still something that I, I'm hiding and not like truly revealing in these records. And that's what I want to do going forward. I want to get more, be more vulnerable without feeling insecure. You know what I mean? but, so that's what I'll be doing for these records, you know, to more of these records because I feel like it'd be a better connection with the people. I do have connections with people, but I feel like people don't overall connect because I don't let it all out. I don't truly put that guard down. I'm, I'm, right, people are connected and they don't take a bunch of money to do it. That's when you know it's real. Come on, DMX had how many number one albums in one year? Two. He sold hundreds of millions of records. I mean, because the people connected to him, regardless if he on drugs or whatever, everybody got somebody in their family on drugs or somebody got a problem. They felt, people felt pop, you know what I mean? He had to do a bunch of marketing. I don't remember a bunch of marketing of those records back in the day. If they did, I mean, it was like on a corporate level, but as far as a TV, I ain't never seen no death row, I mean, Tupac commercials or whatever. You just knew that date it was coming out and it was got people getting you know, period. So, um, yeah, when you you organic and you really doing it from your heart and you really like are who you are who you say you are. People gravitate to you. So, uh, my issue over the years is trying to be perfect and all this stuff. You know, what I mean, it's like if that doesn't work anymore, never work for real for me. You know what I mean? So, I'm just like. I've never did what I did to you, like release, give you the records like that. Cause I, I say, oh, they not enough. Oh, I don't know what he's gonna do. I don't care now. It's like they don't belong to me. Belong to the people. You know what I mean? Right. Right. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, is a value here. I don't want to promote free here. So you guys hear me up. I don't want to promote anything free because people don't value it, value it. You know what I mean? I'm doing it. Yeah, regardless regardless if I do that or not, it still should be valued, you know what I mean? So but, um, cause I'm not giving you anything cheap. I'm giving you all that I got, you know, every time. I'm empty in the chamber. I'm empty in the clip every time. So um, I just want all you artists out there to 
just have value. I mean, know your value. Don't cheapen your art. Like, really put in the work and just do it, man. Like, don't overthink it. It's easier said than done. Just get to it and be what you see. Those things that you see when you're sleeping, though, that's real life. It's not a dream. That's real life. Just remember that, you know, and you're going to be all right. Whew, that's hard, bro. It will have to be with Nas at this moment. I relate to him most, especially the things he's doing with, uh, uh, what's that producer who's producing his record now? Uh, Hit, hit boy, hit boy, hit boy. Records he's doing with hit boy is just out of this world. It's like when I listen to One King, I'm like, man, he just beat me to it, bro. It'll be Kanye West on production and Nas, <laughs> but overall, um. If I was born in another life, for real, I'd be a West Coast artist. I love West Coast music. I love Bay Area music, for real. Like, I love, like, if you heard the song H and I C, it got a Bay Area feel to it. It's like, pay attention to that record. It's like, my voice goes well to those Bay Area beats. And, um, I don't know, man. It's hard to say, but I, I will work with Nas and have Kanye West on the production. But if I can have my old choice it'd be somebody on the west coast like west coast music i, I know i would prevail like hard in the bay or something like that with the voice like that you a really hip, you a real hip-hop fan bro yeah you, you're smoke you got a smorgasbord over there man <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, so what is it all about? See, I like the excitement you got mm -hmm. talking about hip hop. It brings you, like, you know where you was at, you know what time frame it takes you. It's like a quantum physics or something, man. Like, it takes you back, like, instantly. You, I knew where I was when I listened to uh, uh, Biz Marquis. You know what I mean? I was 27th Street. I was seven and six or seven years old when I heard that record. Um, Eyes open on 27th Street and off of VA when I was like six or seven when I seen LL Cool J. He was like the biggest thing on planet Earth when I seen them, them ropes, man, and the yeah, five-finger rings, man, and the cars and all of that.